there are over 100 commanders in rise of kingdoms but not all commanders are created equal and with so many commanders in the game these days it might be hard for some of you to figure out which commanders are the absolute must have best commanders in the game so today i'm going to be sharing with you guys the six must have commanders in rise of kingdoms as well as three honorable mentions that i want you guys to be aware of so hopefully this video helps you figure out if your account is on the right track or not especially if you're a brand new player but first what's going on guys cheers now really quick about 68 percent of you guys are not subscribed to the channel if this video ends up being useful to you consider subscribing and dropping a thumbs up it helps out the channel way more than you think and if you don't do it my tamagotchi is gonna die and you don't want that blood on your hands do you anyway let's jump right into the honorable mentions here and if you think that i'm gonna talk about belisarius prime at all in this video well you must not have read the title of the video now the first honorable mention here is isong ye now ysg is one of the first commanders that you're gonna get your hands on from the wheel of fortune and of course he is a decent commander in the end game I know that he's very old he's very vanilla and he is definitely outclassed these days which is why he lands himself in the honorable mentions if you do end up maxing him in the early game let's say around kvk1 then you're definitely going to get really good use out of him in the end game in season of conquest he may be sort of a transition commander until you start to build out two or three archer marches in which case he'll probably sit on the bench for a little bit once you get one solid march but once you get two or three marches you might pull him back off the bench but unfortunately Isong is just not what he once was like I said he's kind of been power crept and even though his expertise gives him a circular AoE with a 50 percent skill damage bonus in the fourth skill it just doesn't really compete with some of the end game commanders that we see these days in rise of kingdoms so if you are a returning player to the game if you maybe played a few years ago back then Isong Ye was like the best commander in the game and to this day he's still good he's still usable but he is no longer in that number one spot however if you do plan on using him in the open field this would be my best suggestion for a talent build I really wish he got a circular AoE without the expertise I feel like that would make YSG so much more usable because imagine having him at like 5511 or even 5115 like that would be an insanely good value but unfortunately he just doesn't get the circle until he's expertise and that is super unfortunate it's worth noting that Isong Ye does have a double relic which gives him 20 percent archer defense and five percent skill damage which is nice these are some stats that he really needed he already had a lot of skill damage but the defense is definitely nice and we do already know that they are releasing a third tier of relic upgrade for some of the infantry commanders and I think it's completely reasonable to assume that the other museum commanders are going to get a third relic upgrade at some point as well so it could be a slow rollout we still don't even have the third relic upgrades for infantry even though they were confirmed weeks ago but just keep in mind that Isong Ye will probably at some point get a third tier upgrade which could bring him up to 25 or 30 percent archer defense and he might even get seven or eight percent skill damage which is going to be really cool next on the list for honorable mentions is alexander the great now this is a commander that i would say maybe a year or two years ago i would highly recommend players completely avoiding but recently with the introduction of liu che he has been absolutely dominating on the battlefield so much so that he even makes it into this honorable mention slot when he first came into rise of kingdoms he was like an s plus tier commander and then over the years he dropped to like literally probably a c tier commander like he honestly fell off really hard but then recently he's jumped back up to what I would argue I mean with Liu Che he's probably like an A or B tier commander he has a massive debuff on his expertise primary skill and he gives you so many infantry stats and 30 percent march speed which is unbelievable but the star of the show is the instant proc damage here with the perk of being immune to the all damage debuffs that you see on commanders like Liu Che and Zhuge Liang I used Alexander the Great in my recent KBK he performed extremely well but the reason that he is an honorable mention is because even though he is so good right now with Liu Che that is literally his only pairing he literally like cannot be used with pretty much anybody else maybe you could try him behind like a Gorgo or something to make her a little bit faster in the open field and give her some instant proc damage but realistically I personally think that he lands in honorable mentions which is still a huge bump up from where he was just I would say one or two years ago now I would probably never risk using Alexander the Great as a primary commander these days but if you did let's say you're in kvk2 or something and you really want to use him as a primary then this would be the talent build that i would recommend grab fight to the death it gives you six percent more all damage which is insane stacking all damage for effortless is also great you can grab martial mastery if you're not pairing him with a skill damage commander which is you know with liu che for example would be great grab all the march speed that you can in the infantry tree with fleet of foot you grab one point of health here four points into hold the line three points into the health over here and then you've got a few points left over i usually put one in defense and the other three in on yielding and that's probably the best 
best way to go of course it's also worth noting here that alexander the great does have a double relic now which gives him 20 percent infantry defense and six percent normal damage taken reduction which is nice this means he's going to be taking six percent less damage from liu che just across the board same thing with gorgo but also the infantry defense is really something that he desperately needed because while it looks like he has a lot of infantry defense on the fourth skill it's only there when he has a shield and his own shield is probably only going to last like two or three turns so supplementing that with some permanent 20 percent defense on the relic is really really nice overall though unless the next infantry release has insanely good synergy with alexander the great i think he's still going to stay in the honorable mentions category and the final honorable mention here is minamoto i actually just released my updated minamoto guide on the channel if you guys missed that go ahead and check it out i go super in depth there but i do think that minamoto is an honorable mention as a must-have commander and the reason that he lands in the honorable mentions here is because you can get him on day one of a brand new server you can get him as 5511 for about 30 us dollars he performs super well in kvk1 and also performs decent in kvk2 plus you can sort of transition in the season of conquest with a decent cavalry march with like nevsky minamoto for example in kvk3 and beyond and he also has a double relic which we talked about earlier and likely he will be getting a triple relic just like charles martel and some of the other earlier infantry commanders so as a brand new player i think he is an honorable mention for a must have now the reason that he's an honorable mention is because in the end game he's really not that useful and he also is a commander that you can't get as free to play so he just he can't be a must have commander if he has two extremely big downsides to him but if you are a brand new player who spends a little bit i think minamoto is a really great choice he has nice single target damage here some march speed a unique debuff on the fourth skill and again when you do get the relic here he gets 60 percent of stats on top of the 20 percent of stats he already has which means he has more attack than huo and about the same amount of defense as huo so yes he's not as good as huo but i mean i think you could transition into sock just fine with him especially even at 5511 and after he's no longer pvp relevant you can still use him forever as a peacekeeping commander you can use him for barb for rallies you can use him for the high level barbarians in kvk for marauders all that stuff so he's not ever completely useless even though he definitely does fall off in the end game now if you're going to use him as a primary commander in the early game i would recommend something like this for a talent build you grab feral nature and rejuvenate and you grab burning blood the rage engine here in the skill tree is insane plus you also get tactical mastery and clarity for some extra damage there plus you grab emblazoned shield so you're a little bit more tanky and you get more rage engine with undying fury plus nine percent more damage to archers is insane especially if there's going to be a lot of YSGs in the field in the early game and then later down the line when you transition to more of a PVE build this is probably something that I would consider just go all in on the peacekeeping tree with skipping these two points here really you want to make sure that you grab trophy hunter and if you're going to do barb forts mighty force is great you also grab rejuvenate and a couple of more things here in the skill tree then you have a few points left over you can either grab the extra health here for cavalry or you could do something like this and grab another rage engine it's really up to you but this really sacrifices some more points in the skill tree so just keep that in mind okay with the three honorable mentions out of the way let's move on to the archers because there are two archer commanders that i think are must have commanders in rise of kingdoms and the first one we're going to talk about is none other than juge liang this is oh my god one of the best he is literally a contender for the best commander in the game right now i think liu che is his only rival for the best commander in the game his talent trees are incredible all of his skills are insane and he is basically a complete package the only thing he's missing is march speed why do I say that? Well, five targets, circular AOE with a mega debuff in the active skill. This is one of the best active skills in the game by far. He also gets 30% health, which is basically one of the most premium and best stats that you can ask for. 5% more all damage, like okay, plus 50% chance to just shrug off any control effect is wild. But not only that, he shrugs it off and deals direct damage factor to that target as an instant proc, plus 20% more skill damage and chance for 50% more attack. And he gets the marquee effect, which gives him 10% more all damage damage and when you consume it you deal 1500 damage factor to three targets that's literally another aoe his expertise also has a little bit of a rage engine here like it is an insane commander this is in my opinion the best archer commander in the game of course you can only get him once you reach season three or later of kvk and that's going to be the case for all these commanders that we talk about here so just keep that in mind if you're a new player if you don't see these commanders in game just know they are coming when it comes to talent builds this is what i would recommend for pretty much any archer skill tree commander there's really i mean this is like the best there is it's the same as the y SG talent build I showed earlier and this second must have commander for archers right now I think is Herman Prime this commander is so good with Juge Leong because he gives him that March speed plus he gives him some of the stats that he's missing right Juge 
Daniel Young only has health well now he has attack and defense with Herman it's a perfect pairing here but Herman also has a 2000 damage factor three target AoE and the debuff on Herman is insane it is a double stack of poison which causes them to take more skill damage and you're dealing so much skill damage with this pairing it is literally like a cheat code the third skill here gives you another 20 percent more skill damage for AoE skills which is all that you have on these commanders and he has an instant proc defense reduction here which is wild the fourth skill is not as important here but you take less damage from poison targets and you have a 10 percent chance of an instant proc 200 damage factor AoE which is hilarious and it also gives stacks of poison and finally the expertise gives you bonus triggers of the active skill now if you were going to use Herman Prime as a primary commander which typically you don't normally do that you don't normally see that unless it's with YSG but here you would grab two points in rejuvenate three points in emergency protection then you would grab venomous sting of course this is very good you grab razor sharp for the rage engine and then you come up here to phoenix tail arrows and you have one point left over which i would put in attack but you could of course grab half a percent of health here if you want that as well now between juge leong and herman which one should you invest in first and i think that really depends on if you got ysg in the early game or not if you did and you maxed him out i would say get herman prime first minimum you would do five 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 one I think that's a completely reasonable place to stop. The truth is you're probably not going to be getting the proc of the expertise for the extra active skill very often. Also, the fourth skill doesn't do that much. The most important thing here is the extra stacks of poison that you deal. And you're going to do that whether you're at one point or five anyway. And so you get a lot of the value out of the fourth skill by just unlocking it. So five, 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 one is a perfectly good stopping point for Herman prime, in my opinion. And then having a YSG behind him is just going to be dealing a massive amount of skill damage. But if you skip Yi Song A in the early game, then I would recommend getting Zhuya Liang first, getting him to 5511. Then I would grab Herman Prime, get him to 5551, and pair them together with Zhuya Liang as primary. Then I would eventually finish off Zhuya Liang. I think that an expertise here makes a lot of sense. Again, he is contender for best commander in the game. So this means when you first enter KVK3 and Season of Conquest, the minimum amount of sculptures that you would want to have saved up, like legendary commander sculptures, would be 570. That would be enough to get Herman Prime to 5551 and enough to get your Zhuge Liang to 5511 and then from there you can just continue to feed the sculptures into Zhuge Liang until he's expertise but those minimum viable builds would get this out on the field and you'll still perform really well with it moving on to infantry we're going to talk about Liu Che and I've mentioned him already in the video which just goes to show how important he is I think personally I think he's the best commander in the game I know that other people will say that Zhuge Liang is better I think you can make a great argument for either of them but personally I love Liu Che okay he does a five target smite damage damage AOE with 2250 damage factor that is literally the highest damage factor AOE in the entire game his debuff isn't as good as Yuge Liang but it's still a nice 40 percent March speed snare for three seconds and it's all five targets get this which is insane he also gets 20 percent March speed for infantry which is insane 20 percent defense and he takes 20 percent less skill damage so he's fast and tanky which you love for infantry but he also gets 20 percent attack and a 25 percent chance to deal an instant proc smite damage factor of 300 so he has a ton of damage and a ton of tankiness all in his kit already the fourth skill makes him deal 10 percent more normal damage which means his active skill is going to deal 10 percent more damage and whenever you deal smite damage the target deals 10 percent less all damage for three seconds which is a very powerful instant proc debuff but the star of the show here besides the active skill is the expertise which gives him a 25 percent chance to launch an extra basic attack which not only can trigger a lot of your talents that are triggered with basic attacks but also skills that could proc with a basic attack such as the second skill on alexander of the great the instant proc damage could occur as a result of the expertise but on top of that the extra basic attack gives you extra rage that turn you get like 86 extra rage from this or something along those lines and so this is basically a built-in horn of fury which is one of the best accessories in the entire game i don't know if you guys know that but lots of players run the horn of fury and liu che kind of doesn't even need one because of how powerful that expertise is i made a whole video about that but liu che is incredible and i think he is a must-have legendary commander in rise of kingdoms this would be the talent Build that I would recommend for you guys. I just grab all the March speed here, and also you grab all of the same talents that we did for Alexander the Great. Same thing with Hold the Line and the extra health here. I guess the only downside to Liu Che is that there's no budget build. Like you should just straight up max this commander. And the second must have commander for infantry is obviously CPO. Now, CPO is a tried and true infantry commander. He is one of the best commanders in the game, in my opinion. He also has a powerful three target AoE, 
with a massive health debuff for three seconds this is one of the best debuffs in the game here it just makes the targets so much more squishy and since it's a debuff it benefits every army that should be hitting that target the second skill gives you a ton of attack and march speed so when you pair with Liu Che, you have one of the fastest infantry marches in the game and you get even more outside of territory you also gain 20 percent health which you definitely need for your Liu Che. he has none of it and you have another instant proc damage factor here plus you have some shields and half the time when you take skill damage you're reducing it which is really nice and his expertise gives you 10 percent more skill damage and a nice little rage engine if the target is silent if you do decide to use cpo prime with liu che i would do cpo prime as the primary commander and you would grab rejuvenate here with two points three points into emergency protection again you grab all the march speed over here for the infantry tree you grab hold the line and you grab the extra health you'll have one point left over you could do with it what you will i put it in half a point of health here but you could also put it in the one percent infantry attack here if you want as well now cpo does have a budget build you could do a five 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 one and i think that would be perfectly fine i think the expertise has definitely lost some value over the years if you pair him with guan yu the expertise is great but if you don't pair him with guan yu then you're just like i mean the Liu Che gets no benefit of the skill damage and you're not guaranteed hitting a silent target ever at this point right so with less silence in the field this is less important of an expertise and that means that all the sculptures in the fourth skill would have to be really be worth it and honestly you still get decent value out of the skill just by unlocking it and so five 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 one for cpo prime i think is a decent budget build and if you're asking yourself who should you invest in first Liu Che or cpo i think the obvious answer here is Liu Che, especially because we'll probably be getting new infantry commanders at some point in july that's my best guess here and it's possible that they could be smite damage commanders in which case they're going to pair with Liu Che really really well and so if you're only going to max one of them Liu Che is probably going to be the answer and finally we have to talk about the must-have cavalry commanders in rise of kingdoms and we have to start with nevsky you can't really talk much about legendary calves without talking about nevsky he's been in the game for like two and a half years now and he's still one of the best commanders in the game 2300 single Single target damage is decent but his debuff here is really where the active skill shines this is going to get you up to 45 percent defense reduction for three seconds on the target which is super super good if you're swarming things down if you look at his kit he gives you a nice even spread of attack march speed health and defense plus some more health on the expertise here and his fourth skill just gives you a ton of skill damage not only for himself but also for the secondary commander it's actually insane when it comes to talent builds this is again sort of the best that i would recommend this is pretty much the case for any cavalry and skill tree commander for all the reasons that we've already talked about in the video but really Nevsky has stood the test of time as one of the best cavalry commanders in the game he has a massive debuff decent single target damage and he's quite tanky plus he gives you a ton of skill damage for the secondary a minimum investment here I would say would be five 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 one but really you do want the skill damage on the fourth skill I think plus the bonus health here is going to be really nice on the expertise and the final must-have commander we're going to talk about in this video is of course Joan of Arc prime i'm sure you guys have seen this coming but joan of arc prime is just such a massive skill damage machine that really you're going to see her in the open field for quite a long time especially because we just saw a cav release and it was pretty lackluster by most players standards honestly her active skill gives her a massive three target 2000 damage factory aoe with a nice buff for your allied units plus her fourth skill gives her a 100 chance of double casting that skill every other skill cycle effectively plus some cavalry health and so basically you're just going to be firing off massive aoe skill damage and buffs over and over again with her that is mainly what you're going to do now the budget build here would be 5115 but realistically a 5515 would probably be better even though it does cost a little bit more it is going to give her some more march speed and some more attack here for cavalry which i think is really really nice plus a 5115 is really hard to get even with skill resets so you'll probably want to opt for the 5515 if you have the sculptures to do it now most of the time you're not going to use her as a primary commander but if you do this is the talent build that i would recommend grab rejuvenate two points here grab three points into emergency protection and then you go all the way up to emblazon shield the rage engine for undying fury and you have three points left over you could put them into disarm here or if you really want equestrian excellence you could do that as well i guess you would want this maybe for like arc of osiris or something where march speed really really matters a lot but for open field fighting this is what you would do but realistically you're going to put her as a secondary to nevsky like 99 percent of the time okay so just keep that in mind that nevsky is basically made for joan of arc prime the bonus skill damage he gets on the fourth skill makes sure that the active skill for joan is incredible of these two commanders which one should you invest in first i would say probably nevsky i think nevsky is just such a complete package that let's say you know later down the line they release something better than joan with better aoe 
you'll still probably want to pair it with Nevsky unless it's like a Nevsky joint combo which would be game breaking basically but also like I mentioned earlier if you started the game with Minamoto then you would go with Nevsky first of course and put Minamoto behind him and there you go you have a decent pairing for the start of season of conquest or kvk3 the first time you're ever stepping foot there but again if you have 760 legendary commander sculptures saved by kvk3 you could get a 5551 nevsky and a 5515 joan if you're lucky and right away you'll have an exceptionally good pairing and then eventually you'll probably want to max nevsky but you don't need to max joan honestly the third skill is not very good on her and the expertise is not worth it all right guys that's going to do it those are the six must-have commanders in rise of kingdoms in 2024 plus three honorable mentions guys if you made it all the way to the end of the video consider dropping a thumbs up it really helps out the channel a ton it'll help get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment down below what you think about my list of must-have commanders am i on to something here or did i miss something let me know in the comment section below and which of these commanders do you have are you on the right track or did you make a couple of mistakes along the way we all do don't worry i have an expertise sargon so hey listen it is what it is guys with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace